Here to tell us some more about new elementary progress reports are Judy Hurd from Instructional Services and parent Sharon Dirch Kidder. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, Judy, we had you on a couple uh, editions ago to talk about the, the coming of the elementary progress reports, and it was very positive. We were very excited, and now they're in place. They're so, here. Uh, first, I want to get a reaction from, from Sharon. What do you feel about the new progress reports? Well, I was excited to see the new progress reports for several different reasons. One, as an educator, I use similar kind of progress reports or similar kinds of assessment methods in my college classes. I teach right now, I teach college composition at George Mason and at Northern Virginia Community College. Mm -hmm. And I find this kind of rubric-based ass assessment to be very an effective way to assess student learning and also to ensure that I grade students fairly. So I feel like there's much more equity in terms of um, in terms of how I assess student learning when I stick to a kind of this kind of standards-based mm -hmm. rubric. Mm -hmm. And Judy, just tell us what is the difference between the old progress reports and the new ones? Well, the old progress reports, students received a grade for a subject. So there was one grade for math. In the new progress reports, they receive grades for the standards in that subject. So no longer a single grade, but a series of grades. So for math, for instance, a student's graded in six standards. Um, the life, work, and citizenship skills section, which is similar to the old um, uh, work habits section, is aligned to our school board goals. Um, and there is an effort grade for every subject, which isn't different from the old one, but the other thing is teachers are, uh, we're helping teachers learn how to separate achievement, strict achievement, from some of the things that have been, traditionally been included in grades like, like effort or homework completion. Mm -hmm. So that when a parent sees a grade, that should be a true reflection of that child's understanding of the content that he or she has been taught. Mm -hmm. Now, Sharon, you have a son in... What first grade? grade. First grade. Mm -hmm. So, um, does he, does, I guess it, at first grade, he doesn't really know the difference between the old and the new progress reports, but uh, what does it tell you about your son and your son's learning? Well, I think it gives me a clear understanding of what are the specific skills that they're working on in school. So, I think when you just look and you see math and a letter grade, it doesn't tell you much about what they're actually working on, what he understands, and what he doesn't. And so, for me, it's a much clearer understanding of what they're teaching and what he needs to keep working on. And do you have different conversations with his teacher as a result of the new progress report card? In terms of what he's learning, where he needs to be? Yes, I mean, I think the teachers are, it, it's clear to me the teachers are working really hard to implement this and that they're developing a lot of new assessment methods in order to get mm -hmm. a clear understanding of where each student is. Mm -hmm. And that's enabling them to do targeted instruction. So, so yes, I think the conversation that we had before we got the progress report was very focused in terms of what it is what it is that he's been working on, where he's already above grade level, and so they're able to give him additional, you know, additional work so that he can move forward, and and then the other areas for uh, us to keep working on and help support him at home. Mm -hmm. So it's been really positive. Good. Now, um, have any parents complained that there are no longer letter grades in elementary school? Yeah, we've had a few parents who are who are not happy with the change. You know, it, this is a change of culture. We've had grades in the United States, letter grades, usually A, B, C, D, U, for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. So this is a change of culture. Um, I think the thing that parents are beginning to understand is that at the elementary level, the grades go nowhere after elementary. They don't go, they're not used at colleges and universities or not used even for admissions to honors programs at the middle school level. Mm -hmm. So once parents have an understanding that the grades really are a, a system in which to communicate with parents. They um, understand that the letter grades may not be the best communication for mm -hmm. that. Judy, uh, are we going to see a change in middle school grades as a result? There are no plans at this time to change middle school grades. We're staying with the traditional uh, letter grades with no change to breaking them out into standards or anything. So that's that we are not planning that at this time. Okay, thank you. And Sharon, what are some of the reactions from parents that, that you have heard? I've heard some parents of older children who, who especially who have students who are high achieving and get honor roll, all A's, things like that, that they have some concerns because their students are motivated by grades, that there's going to be some loss when, when the grades are taken away. So and I think um, what this, this enables us to have a good conversation really about what's motivating, about student motivation and and how to motivate students to learn, I think. Because I think grades, 
being motivated by grades actually can cause problems. It's, a, it's an issue that I see a lot teaching college where students get so focused on achieving the A or what grade they're getting instead of what they're actually learning. And it actually becomes a barrier. It becomes something that really encourages cheating. So as students go on and on in the system. And so changing at the elementary level and having this conversation really enables us to, I think, to change the focus um, to encourage students to think about what they're learning, mm -hmm. um, to focus on their personal development. And I think also a larger shift away from what am I achieving, what am I getting as a reward to this, to how, how am I developing as a person, what are my gifts, what do I have to contribute to society, um, and really to develop more satisfaction in learning itself. So um, I hope that this will help move us in that direction because it's something that is incredibly needed in order to, to meet, not just as a society, but and for, I think, personal development, but also to meet the learning goals that we have, especially at higher levels once people get into high school and, and uh, post-secondary education. Well, it sounds like we're building a wonderful foundation. Thank you both for being here. Thank you.